BTEC Applied Human Biology A1 Topic 4 Aerobic Respiration. So here is a mitochondrion. Um, it has a double membrane. It's got the inner mitochondrial membrane, which is highly folded. And on the these folds of the inner membrane are called cristae. And then you've got the outer membrane on the outside, so it's a double membrane. And then the fluid part of the mitochondrion is called the matrix. So respiration is a process in which cells break down glucose to release energy to produce ATP. So aerobic respiration requires oxygen and fully breaks down glucose to produce carbon dioxide, water and lots of ATP. It involves mitochondria. So the equation is glucose plus oxygen that goes to carbon dioxide plus water plus energy. So aerobic respiration requires oxygen and fully breaks down glucose to produce carbon dioxide, water and lots of ATP and it involves mitochondria. And it involves coenzymes. These are molecules that some enzymes need in order to function. Coenzymes in respiration are NAD, FAD and coenzyme A. So NAD, FAD and coenzyme A. Some definitions then. Phosphorylation is the addition of a phosphate group to a molecule. Decarboxylation is the loss of a carbon dioxide from a molecule. Oxidation is the loss of hydrogen or loss of electrons. Remember oil rig. Dehydrogenation is the loss of hydrogen atoms from a molecule. Okay, so there are four stages in aerobic respiration. You've got glycolysis, the link reaction, the Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation. So stage one is glycolysis and this is where pyruvate is made from glucose and it takes place in the cytoplasm of a cell. It doesn't require oxygen and there are two parts of glycolysis. You've got phosphorylation and oxidation. So first, two ATP are used to phosphorylate the glucose into hexose phosphate and then triose phosphate. And then the triose phosphate is oxidized, releasing ATP. And overall, there's a net gain of two ATP. So you've got glucose, which is six carbon. You've got two ATP giving up its phosphate. That turns into hexose biphosphate, which is six carbon, and then quickly into two triose phosphate, which is three carbon. And then four ADP are added to four PI to form four ATP. And two NAD give up, uh, take their hydrogen and they give out to reduced NAD. And you get two pyruvates, which are three carbon each. And because you've made 4 ATP here, but you use 2 ATP there, there's a net gain of 2 ATP. So the products of glycolysis, you get two 3-carbon pyruvate molecules, two reduced NAD, and a net gain of 2 ATP. After glycolysis, the two pyruvate molecules are actively transported into the matrix for the link reaction. So the link reaction converts pyruvate to acetyl-CoA. So pyruvate is decarboxylated. One carbon atom is removed from the pyruvate in the form of carbon dioxide. NAD is reduced to form reduced NAD. It collects hydrogen from the pyruvate, changing pyruvate into acetate. Acetate is then combined with coenzyme A to form acetyl-CoA, which is two carbon. And no ATP is produced in this reaction. So you've got your three carbon pyruvate. Carbon dioxide is given off, which is one carbon. NAD turns into reduced NAD, and then it turns into acetate, which is two carbon. Coenzyme A is added to the acetate to form acetyl-CoA, which is two carbon. 
So the link reaction occurs twice for every glucose molecule and the products per link reaction are one acetyl CoA, one reduced NAD and one carbon dioxide. Remember that the link reaction happens twice per glucose molecule though. Stage three, the Krebs cycle produces reduced coenzymes and ATP. The Krebs cycle involves a series of oxidation reduction reactions which take place in the matrix of the mitochondria. The cycle happens once for every pyruvate molecule, so it goes around twice for every glucose molecule. So the first bit is formation of a six carbon compound called citrate. The two carbon acetyl CoA enters the Krebs cycle and combines with the four carbon oxaloacetate to form the six carbon um, citrate. And then the coenzyme A goes back to link reaction to be reused. And then to form the five carbon compound, the six carbon intermediate is decarboxylated. It removes the carbon dioxide. And it's also oxidized to form carbon dioxide and reduced NAD. And then you get this five carbon compound. And then finally, you've got regeneration of a four carbon compound. So the five carbon compound is again decarboxylated, releasing carbon dioxide, and it's oxidized three times to form two reduced NAD and one reduced FAD. And enough energy is released in one of the Krebs cycle to synthesize a molecule of ATP from ADP and PI. And that is known as substrate level phosphorylation. And the end product of this reaction is oxaloacetate, and then the cycle begins again. So for each turn of the Krebs cycle, three reduced NAD, shown in green, are produced, one ATP, one reduced FAD, and two carbon dioxides are released. And remember that the Krebs cycle happens twice per glucose molecule. So therefore, um, six reduced NAD are produced per cycle, two ATP, two reduced FAD, and four carbon dioxide are released. And there's also a final stage called oxidative phosphorylation. However, this isn't on the specification. So 32 ATP can be made from one glucose molecule. As you know, oxidative phosphorylation makes ATP using energy from the reduced coenzymes. 2.5 ATP are made from each reduced NAD and 1.5 ATP are made from each reduced FAD. Remember, one molecule of glucose produces two pyruvate, so the link reaction of the Krebs cycle happens twice. So glycolysis produces two ATP, glycolysis produces two reduced NAD, link reaction two reduced NAD, Krebs cycle two ATP, Krebs cycle six reduced NAD, Krebs cycle two reduced FAD. Um, so each NAD is 2.5, each FAD is 1.5. And if you add that all up, it makes 32. And finally, anaerobic respiration. During vigorous exercise, it is not possible to deliver enough oxygen to our muscles to generate all the ATP required through aerobic respiration alone. To get the additional ATP we need, we need um, during this sort of exercise, we use anaerobic respiration, which does not require oxygen. Anaerobic respiration takes place in the cytoplasm. It is basically glycolysis. Glucose is not completely broken down, which results in less ATP, which is two ATP being made. The end product of glycolysis is pyruvate, but for anaerobic respiration to continue, the pyruvate is reduced by reduced NAD to produce lactate. This is to regenerate oxidized NAD, which is needed for glycolysis. So the pyruvate is broken down to moved to lactic acid by reduced NAD, which gives up its hydrogen to form NAD.